Peggy Orenstein, Boys and Sex, Young Men on Hookups, Love, Porn, Consent, and Navigating the New Masculinity. Embark on an enlightening journey into the world of today's adolescent boys as Peggy Orenstein's Boys and Sex, Young Men on Hookups, Love, Porn, Consent, and Navigating the New Masculinity, unveils their struggle to establish healthy emotional and sexual identities. Delve into topics such as toxic masculinity, the impact of pornography, the reality of hookup culture, and the complexity of sexual consent among these young men, as well as the challenges faced by LGBTQ and Black adolescents. This book summary ensures a comprehensive understanding of the intertwined nature of these significant issues, as well as the imperative role that parents and educators must assume in guiding the new generation toward a more inclusive, compassionate, and emotionally enriched future. Demystifying Male Stereotypes Journalist Peggy Orenstein's research sheds light on the unexpected qualities young men value in an ideal woman, such as leadership and intelligence. However, the damaging stereotypes associated with traditional masculinity continue to persist, negatively impacting male mental health and emotional well-being. By examining the processes of gender socialization that start at home and continue in schools, we can understand how these stereotypes perpetuate, ultimately affecting boys' emotional development and behavior. Despite expectations, when studying teenage boys' views on the ideal woman, journalist Peggy Orenstein found that qualities such as leadership, ambition, and intelligence were given priority over stereotypical physical attributes. Yet, the image of a strong, Silent man continues to permeate our society, causing young men to struggle with mental health challenges stemming from a lack of emotional expression. Emodiversity, the ability to feel and express a range of emotions, is essential for maintaining a healthy mental state. However, societal pressures to conform to traditional masculine stereotypes often lead boys to suppress their emotions, negatively impacting their mental health. A survey conducted in 2018 among over 1,000 U.S. adolescents revealed that young men who identified with male stereotypes were six times more likely to harass and bully their peers. Additionally, they were more susceptible to engaging in binge drinking, risk-taking behaviors, and experiencing depression. These disconcerting statistics demonstrate the harmful consequences of stifling emotional expression. Gender socialization begins within the family where studies show that both mothers and fathers use a narrower range of emotional vocabulary and exhibit less empathy toward their sons when compared to daughters. This socialization process further extends into the education system. Psychologist Judy Y. Chu has discovered that preschool-aged boys typically feel comfortable displaying their need for emotional connections. However, as they progress through schooling, they learn to suppress these needs. By the age of 14, Many boys fear sharing their emotions with male peers due to the perception of weakness. Contrarily, girls in the 2018 survey believed there were numerous ways to express themselves as female, while boys felt immense pressure to conform to traditional strong and unemotional male identities. Both adult authority figures and peers contribute to this pressure by discouraging boys from expressing emotions, using phrases such as, man up, or resorting to derogatory labels. The strong, silent male image is not a celebration of masculine identity but rather a toxic stereotype causing harm to our young men's development, relationships, and overall well-being. Porn's Impact on Young Minds The early exposure to explicit pornographic content has become increasingly common among millennial and Gen Z boys. This impacts their sense of pleasure, arousal, and sexual self-esteem. As these young boys enter adulthood, they often struggle to reconcile online pornography with real-life sexual experiences. This has resulted in increased concerns about physical appearance and performance and has affected their ability to be aroused by real-life partners. The increasing popularity of explicit and potentially triggering content has also led to a concerning normalization of coerced or non-consensual acts. It's crucial for parents and educators to address these issues and engage in open discussions about the implications of such exposure on young minds. 
The undeniable presence of pornography on the internet has made explicit content easily accessible to a wide audience, including young adolescent boys. As a result, these boys are exposed to pornography long before they engage in any sexual experiences. With online platforms like Pornhub offering a plethora of explicit content at their fingertips, millennial and Gen Z boys are quickly becoming well acquainted with the world of hardcore pornography. While pornography isn't inherently harmful, and healthy sexual curiosity is natural during adolescence, the vast quantity and intensity of explicit content available to today's youth is causing more harm than good. The exposure to extreme and potentially triggering themes, such as BDSM and gang rape, has multiplied, with survey results indicating that boys are now three times more likely to have watched such content compared to their fathers. These early exposures to pornography are shaping the minds of young boys, influencing their understanding and expectations of real-life sexual activities. Many find it increasingly difficult to experience arousal and pleasure with real-life partners, as their preferences become dominated by the specific features emphasized in pornographic content. These unrealistic standards may lead to concerns about their body image, performance, and pleasure during real sexual experiences. To make matters worse, the prevalence of non-consensual or unwilling pornography is contributing to a warped perception of consent among viewers. Boys may increasingly struggle to differentiate between healthy, consensual sexual relationships and the harmful scenario of coercion they witness online. The time has come for parents and educators to break the silence around this topic and have open discussions with young boys about the potential negative impacts of early exposure to pornography. In doing so, they can foster a healthier understanding of sexuality and relationships, allowing young minds to develop without the dangerous influences of unrealistic sexual expectations. The Hookup Culture Trap The prevailing hookup culture among today's youth promotes casual sex without emotional intimacy, leading to a range of negative impacts on the emotional well-being of adolescents and their relationships. This culture feeds stereotypes that prioritize physical pleasure over emotional connection while encouraging heavy drinking, causing adolescents to struggle with vulnerability and their own self-worth. In the realm of casual relationships and dating apps, today's youth have embraced a hookup culture that prioritizes casual sex without emotional attachment or commitment. However, this mindset carries significant drawbacks, not least because hookup culture stifles emotional intimacy. Many young men find that casual hookups lack emotional depth and reward, but emotional intimacy is not the focus in this culture. According to sociologist Lisa Wade, the heterosexual hookup landscape prizes compulsory carelessness, with the objective being sex devoid of vulnerability or attachment. Any young man who fails to maintain a casual stance or who expresses feelings for his partner could face social exclusion and mockery from male peers. Avoidance of emotional attachment in sexual encounters may stem from the persisting stereotype of college-aged males being both sexually active and confident. This stereotype, combined with the belief that emotions are unmasculine and the easy availability of hookups through dating apps, forms the foundation of this contemporary culture. Disturbingly, this emphasis on transactional sexual experiences contributes to young men treating women as sexual objects, reducing their responsiveness to their partner's needs. Consequently, their sexual encounters are often disproportionate in terms of satisfaction, leading to colder and more distant behavior afterward. Compounding this issue, many young men report feeling pressure to perform sexually despite their lack of experience. To cope with self-doubt, they frequently turn to alcohol before engaging in hookups. Unfortunately, as alcohol impairs judgment and one's ability to interpret social cues, like potential hesitation from a partner, binge drinking can result in poor decision-making, sexual misconduct, and devastating consequences for both the individuals involved and their partners. While not every sexual experience demands profound emotional attachment, a culture that eschews emotional intimacy within sexual encounters is detrimental to the emotional health and well-being of adolescents and their partners. By fostering a focus on casual, transactional sex, hookup culture is stifling opportunities for genuine emotional connection between young people. A call for inclusive sex education. 
Though LGBTQI plus acceptance is on the rise in the United States, there are still significant challenges faced by queer and trans teens, particularly regarding sexual exploration and expression. The lack of inclusive and comprehensive sex education has led to feelings of confusion, anxiety, and isolation. To truly create a more accepting and open environment for all, it is essential to prioritize inclusive sex education that covers the diverse ways in which people can experience sexual pleasure and connection. While increasing tolerance for LGBTQI plus individuals is evident across the country, not all areas reflect these changing attitudes. This leaves many queer and trans teens facing unique struggles in expressing and exploring their sexuality, particularly within conservative or evangelical communities. Same-sex marriage may be legal, and TV shows like Queer Eye may be popular, but that doesn't automatically resolve the challenges faced by LGBTQI plus teens in less accepting environments. Many gay boys in rural, conservative areas resort to using hookup apps like Grindr to connect with others, often while underage. Although these apps can provide a certain level of anonymity and offer a perceived safe space, young users can engage in risky behaviors such as lying about their age or meeting strangers for sex. Trans boys also encounter difficulties in their sexual exploration, often due to the lack of information available about non-penetrative sex. This leads to feelings of hesitation and worry when interacting with potential partners. The current focus of sex education in the United States is primarily on penetrative sex and reproduction, leaving little room for discussions of queer-friendly modes of sexual expression. To truly improve the well-being and development of LGBTQI plus teenagers, it is crucial to establish and promote inclusive sex education. By doing so, all adolescents would benefit from a fuller understanding of the different ways people can experience sexual pleasure, fostering greater acceptance and openness across the board. Double Standards in Sexual Conduct Society frequently admires and embraces aspects of black culture, such as hip-hop and streetwear. Nevertheless, black teenage boys face harsher perceptions and judgments concerning their sexuality than their white counterparts. They are often defined by stereotypes, rather than their authentic qualities, and are subjected to enduring racist assumptions that label them as sexual predators. Any expression of confidence or athleticism could be misconstrued as dangerous, leading to unequal treatment within the framework of sexual misconduct. This disparity results in restricted opportunities for genuine, healthy exploration of their sexuality. Black teenage boys grapple with the same challenges of toxic masculinity as their white peers. However, societal attitudes towards their race further compound their struggles in expressing and experiencing their sexuality. A notable double standard exists concerning the sexual conduct of white and black boys. Many college-aged black boys feel embraced within their academic environments, but this acceptance often stems from racial stereotypes prevalent among their white peers. These assumptions involve attributes such as sexual prowess, confidence, coolness, and athleticism. Although these traits contribute to the image of an ideal man, they can also be mistakenly perceived as threatening by their white counterparts. Long-standing racist stereotypes have portrayed black males as sexual predators, contributing to the belief that black boys who face sexual misconduct allegations would endure more severe consequences than white boys. Unfortunately, available statistics support this notion. At predominantly white institutions, black men are disproportionately reported for sexual misconduct, and white girls are more likely to report black boys than white boys for such behavior. Additionally, black girls experienced sexual assault at a higher rate yet are less likely to report an incident. While it is crucial to address and investigate all sexual misconduct claims, the unfair perceptions and treatment of black boys cannot be ignored. These stereotypes, in combination with structural inequality, hinder black boys from experiencing healthy and constructive sexual exploration. Bridging the Consent Perception Gap In the world of modern dating, meeting someone special and hitting the dance floor can create a euphoric atmosphere. However, the evening's progression may lead to different expectations between men and women regarding sexual consent. 
These differences have resulted in an alarming number of uncomfortable sexual encounters, emphasizing the importance of understanding and implementing proper consent education for young adults. As revealed by a 2016 survey conducted by research group CONFI, there is a significant perception gap between men and women when it comes to interpreting sexual signals. The study, which questioned 1,200 college students about their expectations after dancing and going home with someone, found that 45% of men expected to have sex, compared to just 30% of women. This gap gained further attention with stories like that of comedian Aziz Ansari, which led to many women sharing similar experiences of being pressured into giving consent. Coerced consent, however, is not consent at all, and it can have traumatic consequences for those involved. Recognizing this, the question arises, do young men understand what genuine consent means? In theory, they seem to. A 2015 survey by sociologist Nicole Bedera found that over 1,000 adolescent boys understood the concept of enthusiastic consent and could identify situations where it couldn't be given. The problem, however, was not awareness, but putting this understanding into practice. Alarmingly, only 13% of the boys surveyed reported engaging in a conversation about their intentions leading up to their most recent sexual encounter. And the majority of these conversations had actually been initiated by their partners. Additionally, the young men tended to interpret non-verbal cues, such as smiling or physical contact, as signs of sexual attraction and even consent. This carelessness in obtaining genuine consent can be exacerbated when there is an expectation of sexual activity. Boys might stretch the concept of consent to cover situations where verbal consent wasn't given or use coercive tactics to pressure their partners. Such actions can lead to lasting harm for those involved. Addressing the issue of proper consent is a collective responsibility. Parents and educators must actively discuss the importance of consent with young men, emphasizing that coerced or nonverbal consent is not valid. It's crucial for everyone to understand that, no matter the situation or perceived expectations, no one is ever entitled to sex without clear, enthusiastic, and genuine consent. By fostering healthy discussions of consent, we can bridge the perception gap and create a safer environment for dating and relationships. Unveiling Male Vulnerability The phrase, boys will be boys, injects society with an image of males as invulnerable to victimhood. However, Sexual assault on boys is a hidden issue that deserves equal attention. Both toxic masculinity and cultural representation of sexual assault in popular media perpetuate the dismissal of boys' vulnerability. Breaking these embedded stereotypes enables a more inclusive and empathetic society that acknowledges the legitimacy of male victimhood. Underneath the phrase, boys will be boys, countless boys suffer in silence with little to no recognition of their struggles. Tucked away is the fact that boys can also be victims of sexual assault. The perception of males always seeking and desiring sexual encounters obscures the reality of male victimhood. Sexual assault on college campuses is rampant, drawing attention to both female and male victims. A 2017 Columbia University study revealed that 22% of students surveyed had experienced sexual assault. Out of this percentage, 20% were male victims. These men, however, are often met with unwanted advances, inappropriate touching, and even penetrative assault. In 60% of these cases, the perpetrators were female. Society's toxic masculinity molds the idea that men constantly desire sex, which in turn causes disbelief and dismissal when boys expose their sexual assault experiences. This mindset leads to reactions of congratulation rather than sympathy, further alienating male victims. The blatant differences in how society views male and female victims are particularly prominent in instances of statutory rape, where underage male victims are often seen as lucky. Popular culture plays a significant role in perpetuating this skewed perception. Movies like The Graduate and American Pie present relationships between older women and adolescent boys in a light-hearted and comedic manner, ultimately dismissing the serious implications of sexual assault. The harsh reality is that in the United States, one in six boys will experience sexual assault before turning 18. 
such prevalence contradicts the preconceived image of invincible masculinity, and male victims of female abusers find even more trouble in fitting into society's stereotype. It is essential to challenge these deep-rooted notions of masculinity and male victimhood to cultivate a society that supports and validates the experiences of all survivors. By embracing the vulnerability of boys and dismantling the harmful stereotypes, we can create a more inclusive and compassionate environment for all who suffer from sexual assault. Raising Emotionally Open Men With today's complex and ever-changing world, it's vital for parents and educators to have open and regular conversations about sex, consent, and emotions with boys. As they grow, such discussions should also encompass broader themes like gender, socialization, orientation, and self-awareness. By fostering emotional openness and demonstrating it ourselves, we can guide boys to develop into respectful, understanding, and responsible men who embrace progressive values and meet challenges with courage. The world often wonders what kind of men today's boys will mature into. Indeed, it's a complex question. Peggy Orenstein's discussions with adolescent boys reveal both encouraging and concerning aspects of their development. On the one hand, modern boys are aware of consent, feminism, and LGBTQI plus rights, but on the other, outdated ideas about masculinity, emotional repression, and exposure to explicit content persist. So, how can we, as parents and educators, help boys grow into responsible, respectful individuals who treat everyone, including themselves and their partners, with genuine regard. Open and regular conversations about sex are crucial. But, it's essential to broaden the parameters of these discussions. Sex is not just about penetrative acts, it also encompasses activities such as pleasuring one's partner, oral and anal intimacy, and digital stimulation. Moreover, it's critical to recognize the emotional and ethical aspects of sexual relationships. Let's talk about consent, respect, gender socialization, expression, and orientation with our boys. Addressing these topics paves the way for discussions on meeting their partner's physical and emotional needs while understanding their own desires and boundaries. As responsible adults, we should avoid approaching these conversations as the talk. Educating boys about sex is an ongoing process that requires consistent communication. Ensure that you discuss sex, along with its ethical and emotional aspects, openly and regularly. Embracing these sensitive topics might feel awkward and uncomfortable, especially if you've also been conditioned to suppress emotions and conversations about sex. However, if we want our boys to value emotional openness and honesty, it's essential that we demonstrate these traits ourselves. Our boys are full of potential, but they face numerous challenges along their journey to manhood. To help them hurdle these obstacles and achieve their potential, we must actively guide them, through meaningful communication, genuine care, and by courageously confronting our own discomforts. By doing so, we can nurture a generation of men who will transform the world for the better. In conclusion, Boys and Sex illuminates the complex web of societal expectations and pressures faced by adolescent males today, highlighting the often contradictory messages they encounter regarding emotional expression, sexuality, and identity. This book unravels the negative consequences of embracing toxic masculinity and the importance of taking a fresh look at our current understanding of gender roles. To raise a generation of healthy, well-adjusted young men, parents and educators must engage in open and honest conversations about topics such as consent, respect, and emotional vulnerability. By unpacking these key issues and redefining masculinity for today's youth, we have the power to reshape society's narratives surrounding adolescence, love, and intimate relationships, enabling both young men and women to lead more fulfilling lives.